Welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. I'm very excited about this session. Uh, my name is Scott Ganey. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Nile, and I'm joined by two very distinguished guests. Uh, let's begin with you, Dev. Uh, Dev Gangley works at Jackson as the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. And Dev, I'm going to come back to you because I want you to add a little bit more color to that to a second. And then John Chambers, uh, the founder and CEO of GC2, also, and thank you, John, a uh, co-founder of Nile. And then, of course, everyone knows John, uh, having served as chairman and CEO from Cisco previously. So thank you both. Welcome uh, to our session today. It'll be fun, Scott. Great, Looking great. forward to it. Great. Yeah. So this just as a recap. So this is a session that we're doing as a follow on to a major announcement we made just recently about AI networking. And we were uh, the first amongst uh, the vendor community to re really put performance guarantees as kind of a center uh, point to what we do as a company with all the technology and everything behind that. So we wanted to use this opportunity here to double click on the topic of, of AI and really talk about AI in a first in a broad context, right? In terms of its impact on the multiple markets and industries that you all touch and see every day. Uh, and then also talk about it in specific to, to networking as well and the impact that it may have there. So uh, so with that, I'd like to get started with some of the questions that we have. Dev, this first question is just going to come to you. And I think this is a great opportunity to provide a little bit more background into Jackson specifically and your role. But uh, if you can just give a brief introduction to what's important for you in your role at Jackson when it comes to prioritizing technology investment. So I, I like what you said in some of our earlier conversations about how you take an, an outside in view, really. It's about the experiences, the outcomes that you can deliver for your customers. So with that, if, if you can uh, provide some more color. Love it, Scott. First of all, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'll start with Jackson. Uh, we are a Fortune 500 company, a leading retirement services provider. But more importantly, we are uh, committed to reducing the complexity of retirement planning. As you know, uh, more and more baby boomers are retiring every day. And a lot of them trust us with uh, helping not, they don't want to outlive their money, right? They want to have a partner. I always say we are in the business of selling trust, irrespective of the product we are selling. So uh, I'm very fortunate to be the chief operating officer and I have... Uh, oversight over business operations, enterprise technology, which includes digital data, cybersecurity, AI, and all of that. And coming to your question of prioritization, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. We should always look at uh, customer experience outside in. At the end of the day, our natural tendency is to focus on what we are doing in, as a business, right? So we get very departmental focus. What does sales need? What does marketing need? What does operations need? All of that. If you flip that paradigm and look at it as a financial advisor in our case, how do they want to interact with their retirement services provider, which they use? A consumer, how do they, they want to interact with us? I think the mindset shifts, right? So that's a huge part of it. That's great. That's great. So, you know, we have IT leaders uh, from different industries, even maybe same industry tuning in on this. So, so, you know, as they approach this and they think of this from an end-to-end -end basis, what kind of advice could you give them? Like, how do they approach this uh, on a holistic basis? Yeah, my advice might sound a little boring. And here's why. I always say, make do the foundational things right. So even if you are going to focus on AI, focus on your data investments first. Focus on liberating mm -hmm. data from all those core admin platforms, le legacy platforms, data quality, data governance, all of that as you move forward. Focus on your infrastructure, right? Your network, your cybersecurity, and things like that. Basic, in fact, most cybersecurity incidents happen because of basic hygiene issues, right? Whether it's identity and access management, simplification and things like that. Get your foundation correct. Once you have your foundation correct, then focus on the business problem you're trying to solve 
and then leverage the current technology and tools, right? Today it's generative AI, tomorrow it could be something else, right? We have seen that change over a period of time. What hasn't changed is the core business problems which we are all try striving to solve for. So I would say two main things, get your foundation right, make sure you have a solid foundation and focus on the business problem. I'll take one small tangent. Um, few years ago, I introduced Agile in the organization when I was the CIO. And my first mandate was each and every product owner needs to come from the business. You cannot have an IT product owner. The marketing area needs to own the product they are going to leverage to do better segmentation and better customer outreach, right? So if you are business-led, if we look at things from a business problem standpoint and get the foundation correct, I think we can do wonders as IT and technology people. That's great. That's great. So this next question, John, I want to turn to you. Dev mentioned AI, and of course, I mentioned it at the very start. You you canvas the market, certainly, is part of just your everyday actions, whether it's JC2 or just the connections you have. You have great insight into the industry. What's your recommendation to IT leaders when it comes to just their own exploration of, of AI and all the multitudes of, of different segments it's now touching? Well, you know, it's fascinating, Dev. Once again, it's a pleasure to get to know you today. We might describe an issue in a little bit different words, but our views are identical. Uh, it goes back to AI isn't something new in the last year. It's part of this digital transformation. And it's about developing the trust and the productivity and the differentiation companies have to do for their customers. Uh, I bet on AI very heavily seven and a half years ago when people literally couldn't even spell it in terms of the focus. And the first area, Dev, was exactly what you, you articulated. It was customer service. And how do you develop that trust with your customers and make it a pleasant experience? As you move with new technologies and to transform business, uh, you want to make sure that the basics are done well. And that starts with the network. It starts with simple to use operational capabilities. You then want to leverage the new technology, not for technology's sake, but to make it so much more enhancing for the customer and for the agency associates that are touching it. And then you want to make it really secure. And you have to do this with an architectural approach. Uh, when I said literally in the very early 90s and the internet would change the way you work, live, learn, and play, and people said, no, it's about, it's not, a, it's just moving around zeros and ones. We said it would transform everything. I think AI will do the same thing, except probably three to four times faster and at a much larger scale. Take initiatives which are post focused on automation then experience, then growth, right? As you look at AI, because the automation initiatives are the low hanging fruit. You will get wins, your board will like it, your C-suite will like it. You can show immediate re results, right? Intelligent automation can now be scaled at a very fast pace, right? Then move on to experience, then move on to growth. Some Sometimes organizations like ours, like financial services, get too much stuck on proving the next new dollar that AI generate that. There are too many people competing for that next new dollar, right? You have your salespeople competing, you have, you have your marketing people competing, technology saying we, we generated that next new dollar. I think if you focus in those layers and get some wins back to what John said, you will start seeing the results immediately. You know, this next question is around kind of where do you see the largest opportunities AI play in? And maybe maybe that should be cast sort of in that idea of, of automation experience and growth. Do you see AI potentially impacting any one of those more than, than the others or all three equally? In terms of the first areas to move, they've got to be successful and they got to be meaningful, not just to check the box on AI or check the box on digitization or security. Uh, the areas that will have the most impact start with customer service. Uh, just like with the internet, it started with entering orders online and then customer service was second in terms of the implementation. Then you got into the fancy plays about a virtual 24 hour close to run your business better. So I think each industry will have areas that are very uh, high payback and very fundamental on either revenue growth or productivity or customer service. It needs to be embedded. And I'll actually use infrastructure and cybersecurity examples, right? Cybersecurity people think of generally as defensive or reactive, right? But think about voice, right? You can use voice for authentication, which improves the experience. 
And at the same time, you can use voice analytics to prevent fraud, right? So you are providing voice as authentication so the customer doesn't have to wait. But in the background, you are using technologies. I'm sure, John, you are aware of multiple companies, which we both know, right? Which provide yes. the technology to prevent fraud, right? So now you are trying to do both. You are helping your infrastructure grow based on analytics and AI and things like that, but you're also improving the experience. Mm -hmm. Similarly, on the infrastructure side, I'll take one more step before I come to AI. Just like, like how applications went to software as a service, right? I see infrastructure moving more and more towards things, I think, which is caught closer to your organization, like networking as a service. That's coming on its way because simplification is the name of the game. We cannot continue to have complex networks, complex infrastructure if we have to support the scale and the growth which we are seeing, right? So that foundation is also going to change. That's that's fantastic. So if we one final question and then and then we'll wrap up here. I want to bring since the audience here, you know, we have IT leaders tuning in. We also have people who come specifically from the networking field tuning in on this. I, I love it. I think Dev, you touched on it briefly to relate AI, AI automation specifically to the enterprise network and how you see Dev, you've come up through the CIO role. So you've seen a lot of transitions yourself. Obviously, John, you have too, just through your Cisco days and beyond, right? What sort of role or what impact, sorry, will you expect or do you think AI can have on the enterprise network now and in the future? Uh, I think you will see it not only enable uh, all of the applications we talked about before uh, and enable it at a dramatically lower cost and the simple get it installed and run and not have to worry about upgrading systems, et cetera. And as you know, 60 to 70 percent of the cost of a network uh, is the operational cost. That's an area that if you eliminate most of it, you can move those very valuable resources up to refocus it on the customer and revenue generation for it. But it will also go down to the next major move in AI will be networks. And uh, I think you'll see that out of the big companies like AMD, NVIDIA, et cetera. But at the enterprise level, these customers have to put it all together. Uh, and that's where you have no choice but to move on AI. Don't do it for check the box. Get the areas that really move the needle and go with an architecture that makes it happen. That would be my reaction. I'll just add a couple of things. One is I feel like we'll have much more real-time monitoring and analytics come in the new networking world as we simplify our networks, move to networking as a service. So even the network engineers will move up the value stream, which is where I will end with. I feel like the AI revolution will make each and every associate in an organization, whether they sit in technology, marketing, sales, business, be more have better digital dexterity and move up the value chain, which is the biggest change we will see. Even the internet and the dot-com and all the things we saw, IT did a lot. It did not have, SaaS started to do it, right? SaaS started to introduce it to the finance organizations and others to use technology. I think AI will make, it will not make developers irrelevant. A lot of people say that developers will do stuff, but it will make everyone competent enough to leverage technology at a much more bigger scale, irrespective of the department or the role they sit in. That's great. Well, hey, I want to end there. I appreciate your time, Dev. You've you've been great. Uh, appreciate your uh, sponsorship and support of Nile as well. John, thank you for your time today. Uh, Pleasure. With that, I think we're going to wrap this up. Thank you very much, all.